Vitika, when I was at your place for the healing, um, we spoke afterwards about new new age and old new age. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Could you elaborate a little bit on that? What does that mean for you? Um, yeah, it's 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 gonna immediately be confusing when we keep saying new new and old new. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's old paradigm, new paradigm in a sense. And even in the new age movement of today, I see a lot of old paradigm thinking. Um, yeah, we spoke about this earlier. Uh, you also noticed, you said, um, in the circles that you surround yourself with, that um, you can get stuck in even um, a very idealistic, beautiful world view. And I think it's really important today where we are right now, because I feel things are accelerating and mm. it's like all of our higher selves, in a sense, or the universe is asking from us very politely very lovingly but to step it up a bit mm. <laughs> and um, i feel it for myself how important it is to be um, crystal clear on things that might be blurring our view mm. and um, that is the most exciting part to focus on right now mm. because there's so much to gain Mm. and so much to let go of and by being more in the flow with that we can really uh, open doors to worlds that reflect to us the influence we already have mm. on our reality mm. and um, I love that I'm really excited about that yeah but I feel resistance or I encounter resistance sometimes in um, the yeah the, also in the new age movement especially when it comes to the field of the, the channeling and the, the extraterrestrials. Why do you think that is? Why, why is that resistance there? Um, I don't know. I think it's a mix of our culture, the way we've been raised to believe that that is not there yeah, yeah. <laughs> as a fact. Yeah. And maybe the Hollywood movies making it all these like flesh-eating man from Mars. <laughs> yeah. But this is changing. I can see that the, it's already changing. The, 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 there are a row of recent, more recent uh, movies from the cinemas that have been very beautiful that I'm like, wow, mm, yeah. somebody's starting to get it. Somewhere on a higher level, we're beginning to, to flow information to us that has a broader perspective, like in Avatar yeah. or First Contact. Or um, there are so many um, movies that are now showing... A, different point of view where we get to empathize with the extraterrestrial beings yeah. and see that there's love there and that we are one mm. and that destructive ways are not working mm. or there's this one with those this um octopuses have you seen them no i've not, not seen that one <laughs> i don't know the title <laughs> right now i'm yeah. blanking out yeah. uh, but it's about language very much and they have this special language and then they take in they get this interpreter to mm. uh, get the language of these other beings that are very otherworldly, very alien. Mm. But the beauty is in this movie, you can see there is a real, there's a lot of fear. They bring a lot of fear up in humanity. And I mm. think that's natural. That's yeah. the first stage. Yeah. And then um, this woman begins to tune in with them, really, really passionate about being able to translate that language that mm. they offer to communicate with us. Mm. And she is the one that interprets it eventually in a way it's like war or no war and it's depending on how it's interpreted oh, yeah. the language but she gets it she gets right. how to look at it. but there's like people from the army standing behind yeah. her like tic tac what does it mean come on let us know yeah. and we want to make big decisions that will affect the entire planet yeah so it's really exciting and i love that movies the way i look at them are like previews mm. or this is also what my guides explain to me we, we uh, allow different parallel realities into our world through mm. movies and books mm. to tune in with possibilities mm. and we have never had such a broad spectrum of possibilities that's true yeah. and that's how it brings it all back to us as an individual for everybody for themselves because it's about what do you want to do with all the options that are in front of you right now because mm. you get to choose yeah. you have free will yeah 
Do you I'm think really we, excited about that. Do you think we, we, are, <laughs> we are sort of slowly being massaged into a, uh, opening up to this bigger reality of, hey, we're not alone? Yes, I think we've been doing that for a long time. Yeah. We just didn't know. And that uh. once this is going to be... In, in one reality, perhaps one that we will both <laughs> be in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it, it gets revealed that, that uh, extraterrestrial intelligence that we can communicate with is there. Mm -hmm. um, and it has settled in a bit. So after the first phase of, of course, people are going to be surprised. Maybe there will be a wave of fear to release as well, mm -hmm. to be released. I guess that's a normal step along the way. Mm -hmm. But when people chill out a bit <laughs> like okay this yeah. is happening would they have wanted to destroy our planet they would have done it ages ago right yeah, yeah. so there really is no yeah. reason to think they yeah. are here to destroy us there is really there's no rational fact to have to believe that no. so when they ease into that okay they're there they're actually taking it very friendly friendly little steps this is you know an open invitation we don't have to do anything we can take it or leave it yeah when it's like that, people will begin to see, I think, how long we've already known in our yeah. the hidden history stuff that never mm. made it to the books, really. Yeah. But the, what the I also stories, see, yeah. you know. I also see that a lot of the books that I used to read, I read with different eyes now. And I think, mm. hey, it's already in there. That's what I mean. You know, yeah. and it's, it's like it's been concealed to us maybe because we weren't looking that way but exactly. now that our mind sort of opens up to hey that is a possible reality hey, and really suddenly fun. you're seeing it everywhere yes did exactly. you also find that that it's like it, yeah. it, also, it all opens up yeah i'm surprised because i've been looking at this for a few years like this now yeah. and i'm like how many hints can you possibly <laughs> leave for yourself this yeah. is really really overwhelming but yeah. i guess we needed it yeah, it takes yeah. time for every, you know, paradigm. And it's, yeah. I, I guess it's also, there's also a lot of fear, as you already said. I mean, with all the stories of, of abductions and stuff, how, how do you see that? How do you see this whole abduction thing? I don't really like the words, but no. that's because I much better understand now what actually happens in such occasions. Um, not wanting to um, deny that of course this has been these kind of experiences may have been very um, unsettling for people in the past and i've actually had a, a row of them in my own life that definitely triggered all kinds of fears in me yeah. but that was before i understood what was going on and once you understand you know it's a little bit like so the way i see it on a higher level you have decided to be a part of that hybridization project which is what the recent like abduction stories from the past say 60 70 80 years are about mainly um creating a new race yes so, yes yeah exactly yeah. the future yeah. preparing for future humanity yeah. in a sense yeah. so on a higher level your spirit which is like pure unconditional love knew it wanted to co-create this new world so this is how Arjun shows it to me. He says, the people who signed up for it received a preview of what the world could be like. Mm. And they fell in love with it. Mm. And that is the only reason they would sign up for it. Mm. It's not because they were forced or pushed into it or they had to. Although when they're incarnated, once you're here, you forget everything. You forget your agreement. Yeah. because that's part of the deal of being human mm. a little less so now because we forget less we're mm. we have a stronger connection and this yeah. is with the raising of the frequency of the earth it's strengthening cool <laughs> mm. but it was also part of the game so you want to play the game of life yeah but you also want to keep your agreement yeah and the beings who come say pick you up to um, co-create that agreement with you they're trying to communicate with you in a way so you understand that this is what's going on. And with younger people, they understand it more immediately often. Mm. But the older generations really didn't get it. The no. rationale, the rationale mind was so in the way, mm. they just didn't get it. Mm. And also in the beginning phases of the um, abduction wave, mm. uh, if you want to use that word, the ETs didn't know how to relate to us yet. Yeah. It was new for them to relate with us. Mm. So this was a whole journey. 
Mm. Those ETs are not even a part of it anymore, if we are talking the typical greys. Mm -hmm. But um, the hybridization project is still unfolding and still happening in much yeah. more subtle, mild ways. Mm. But people can still be donors and fathers and moms of hybrid children, mm -hmm. as mm. far as I see and know for myself. Yeah. So you, you lost your fear. Oh, completely. For this. And, and yes. what, how did you do that? I mean, I think, I think that, that, that's probably the major step to take yes, in a it's sense. A huge because step. then you, you can open up without, you know, the, the Pavlov reaction of, yeah. oh, it doesn't yeah. exist, I don't want anything to do with it. Well, by realizing, and this happened for me when I was 23, mm -hmm. uh, by realizing that it's all me. Yeah, yeah. That there is absolutely nothing I can encounter that is not in one way, shape, or form, already connected to my own personal frequency. Uh -huh. So you can manifest having encounters with all kinds of multidimensional beings, be it spirits or extraterrestrials or whatever. If it's very fearsome, um, it means it's reflecting something to you that you've been afraid to look at. Yeah. And that is loving. <clears throat> so mm. this is the, the mm. key thing. Mm. To realize that you send that to yourself yeah. in order to wake up to an aspect of you that wants to be seen. And I felt pretty haunted a big part of my life because I saw the beings in my room with my eyes wide open. I know I'm awake. Like I felt mm. like I was pretty other in a sense than the, most people I knew. Mm -hmm. um, but the haunted feeling only came from labeling it as haunting. Yeah. And it was just before I understood, oh, wait a minute, now when I'm looking back at it, at the whole, the whole history as that past version self of me experienced it, because I feel a completely different person right now. But when I look back at that, I can see, oh my God, I must have loved myself so much for sending that to me over and over and over again until I would finally feel forced to wake up. Because mm. I had to do that. Mm -hmm in order to deal with it. And when I did, I started reaping the fruits. Yeah. And now I am like, I'm so happy all of this yeah. happened and I could not have done it without this. No. I had to have the startling experiences mm. in order to wake up to the realization, the knowingness without a doubt that there's more between heaven and earth. Yeah. And that it is not after me, it is looking after me. Mm. I mean, how cool is that? Wow. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also uh, had a very similar experience during the session you, we did together. Oh, you did? Um, and uh, that, you know, many of the things that are happening in my life right now, which, you know, there's a lot of beautiful things, but sometimes not so beautiful things happen too, of course. Mm -hmm. um, that um, during the session, uh, Arjun really made me see that even those seemingly adverse circumstances were actually love and very beneficial and you know uh, I came away uh, on my bike driving home you know feeling really grateful for the beings who were giving me a really hard time right now you know in my life so and and I think that's only possible from that higher perspective right because then you see the whole scenario yeah. instead of just you know the tiny scene you're in right now you know where everything seems gloomy and dark and you know everybody's against you or whatever you think you know but then when you zoom out and you look at this higher perspective, it's like, this is great. You know, I've, I've even created it myself. And yeah. thanks very much for all the resistance, guys, because that's really building me up, you know, to really believe in myself, love right. myself, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So exactly. I get that, yeah. Same thing. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. see now that all the, even though the fear was real fear when I felt yeah. it or that older version of me felt it, it only created momentum to express more love, mm. more passion. Yeah. So perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you really need that higher perspective, I you think. You do. Right? Yeah. As long as you cling to the memory of the fear, this is why I actually say older version of myself because it yeah. wasn't, it isn't me anymore. Yeah. It's just because I'm so completely aware constantly of. Um, they're only being here and now. This, this is it. This mm. is it. This is it. It's like yeah. the mantra. Yeah. That. As I tell any story that refers to my so-called past, I'm making it up right here, right now. Yeah. Because we recreate the past by deciding what we believe is our past right yeah. now. Yeah. So 
it is important, I guess, at some point to see that everything we tell each other is a story yeah. and we get to pick the energy frequency of it. So when I tell something that was sad to my older version, mm. um, I wouldn't share it unless I had already processed it. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, that's because you're very reinforcing yeah. an old whatever. I don't have to do that. No, There's absolutely no reason to to throw fears into the world no. that is already so overloaded with yeah. <laughs> that idea. Yeah. And we have so much to give when we when we clean up the trash first and then. Sure. <laughs> sure. But it's one thing to to sort of see that yourself um, and you know constantly allow yourself to be a new version of yourself. But you know, I think in your case also there's a, an environment you're in. So did it? I mean, was it a hard struggle for you to you know to to be that new self in the environment you were in? You, for instance, parents, friends, family, people at work, I don't know what, because usually it takes like, you know... To that was the hard part. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I wasn't raised with this kind of thing at all. Right. I'm the odd one in the family. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, and I can see why there was so much fear and resistance. I picked it up because I translated belief systems from my environment into my own perceptor, perception. Mm -hmm. And that made me respond fearful. And this is the case for most children. Mm -hmm. especially for children because we are taught to believe one thing to be true and another one not to be true so if your parents tell you to go to church and that if you don't see an angel in your bedroom which is fine of course but if it's like very different from an angel and there's nowhere in the bible saying that god created ets mm -hmm. well then that's maybe the devil right. so that's what i thought i thought something is coming for me that I can't explain it because this is all they gave me, but I knew in my heart it, it can't be that. Mm. So being in that um, split, I decided to not talk about it. Mm. I tried it when I was five years old, and I actually remember, <laughs> to tell uh, a babysitter, and she started to kind of freak out, and I felt her panic, mm. and then I said I made it up. Uh, and that was my decision because I didn't want to upset other people. To uh, I wanted to figure it out for myself before I would share this with the world. And uh, that took me until I was 23. So that's uh, when I discovered, for a fact, I can work and play with you guys. As a child, I also went to what I call astral school. They showed me the places where the hybrid children play. We went on the ships and I saw all these things and the beauty and the love. And a lot of the lessons that I got there, I used in my daily life. But I felt super alone in that, especially in the beginning times. Yeah. There, imagine. It felt for the longest time like I had nobody to speak about these things with. But now, looking back, I can also see that's a belief system too. Yeah. And I didn't try, so I, never, I will never know if that yeah. was even real. No. So we isolate ourselves, mm. we hurt ourselves, it's our own belief systems that create the pain. Yeah. So I'm completely owning that I created that path that way. Yeah. But also that the harshness of it for that version of me is a part of my full engine now, right now, of joy and celebration of where I am today because I'm no yeah. longer holding myself back. Mm. I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. with you. I'm sharing yeah. with the world. Yeah. Um, I stopped caring what other people think. Mm. And it made me a magnet for other people who have been wanting to speak about this. They're like, oh my God, finally somebody understands me. Because mm. there's so many people in the Netherlands, in Europe, all over the world, um, who have had childhood experiences like the ones I had. Mm. And they just never knew where to turn. Yeah. Yeah. Which can be really, um, you know, frustrating, or can lead to all sorts of psychological problems. I can imagine. Yeah, it could. Because you, because you can sort of choose between either shutting it off, sort of uh, it doesn't happen, and or not being able to shut it off and talking about it, but probably in a way that nobody will understand, and they will sort of label you as being a little bit, you know. Yeah, both of these wouldn't work because no. I think if you talk from a neediness mm -hmm. of needing confirmation. Um, you're still giving your power away. Yeah. And shutting it all in doesn't work either because you're overdosing yourself. with. Yeah. Yeah. So what I did, I used art. 
and music mm -hmm. to channel my experiences. So in art school, I found ways of painting uh, or I wrote a poem or I wrote a mm. song or I played mm. my guitar um, as a way to sing about this. Mm. One of my first songs is about society and how I could see already this is this is not working. Mm. And um, yeah, a lot of paintings I made and, and little books I wrote because I did illustrational arts yeah. are all about the deeper truths I knew to be true already and I, I was celebrating them in my own way. I was even working for a newspaper for a while and I was smuggling in little star systems and UFOs in the illustrations that I made for the newspaper and yeah. I was like, yeah. Hee -hee. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like Leonardo da yeah. Vinci yeah. is yeah, yeah. putting his secret codes everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, as long as I allow myself to play with it or flow with it on some level, I can keep it light and joyful because I got that much from these beings. It's about remaining in your heart. Yeah. So I didn't need it to be confirmed or something. I still don't. Mm. I really don't care if people believe this, mm. but now I feel confident enough to step outside with it um, and to speak about the actual events or as I see them now. Uh, instead of finding um, a semi-in-between route to communicate my experiences, which mm. the illustrations and um, yeah. the paintings would have been more. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And you too, yeah, you, you worked with music all this time, you're writing a book now. And yeah. So creativity yeah. is a great outlet and oh, processing yeah. machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I think... Um, uh, creativity for me uh, has so much to do with with listening and being open to inspiration because uh, well music is is very obvious I, I, I mean if I, um, I I don't think I would be able to play music if, if I didn't listen to it at the same time you know it's like otherwise it gets very boring you're yeah. just doing your scales la, 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 la. yeah <laughs> there's no music you know right. but music is when there's sort of some interaction happening and yeah. you're sort of starting to listen and i really like the other day i saw um, an interview with jaap van zweed he's a dutch uh, violin player and okay. and uh, um, conductor and he said that sometimes he would stand in front of the orchestra and then all of a sudden he would disappear it was like jaap was gone mm -hmm. but he said the interesting thing is that the music went on playing uh -huh. so but he said it wasn't like we were making music but the music was making us wow and that i thought that was such a beautiful way of of channeling in a sense you know yes. it's like you're you're opening yourself up to the music and you're just letting the music play through you you're just like an instrument something like that yes. and i find that um not just for music but i mean for life actually a very nice way to, to, to live because you're constantly uh, like a, a bit like a child, um, you know, so what, wondering what's going to happen now, you know, and see what life will present you with today and playing with that and yeah. just going with that instead of, you know, getting up every day at seven and going to work and doing da 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 right. you know? Yes. That's really like old for me. Yeah. And this sort of feels like a new territory we're stepping in. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly how I look at it. Yeah. And it is very childlike. The Yael that I speak with, yeah. the, the hybrid races, they are incredibly playful and light. And it's, it's this like deep, um, slow is not, I don't mean slow, but because mm. it's super high frequency, but it's just like slow wisdom. It's like always there. It's like this foundation of yeah. love and knowing. Yeah. And then there is this high butterfly movement. Yeah. playfulness on top of that yeah constantly both happening yeah it's like being very stable and calm in the knowing yeah and then super quick and rapid that that you could translate into music that idea of yeah. this like undertones and then the, the yeah. higher yeah. notes yeah, exactly so i'm in love with that yeah as soon as you feel that i understand um john lennon's quote that he said he yeah. lived for the moments of inspiration yeah yeah, yeah. because once you feel that, you, you're actually simply in full alignment with your own higher self, as yeah. I understand it. Yeah. And whoever wants to dance with you in that moment can cross-connect, which yes. is beautiful. Yeah. In that moment, you feel in love. 
Mm-hmm. You don't. You're, there's not just being in love with a person. There's in love with life. There's in love yeah. with a cup of tea. There's in love with breathing. Yeah. And in order to become receptive to that, you have to get to know yourself mm. and be okay with silence. Yeah. And that's why I so love that you do the meditation um, uh, movement yeah. in the Netherlands uh, yeah. because it's. For me too, it was the first step into the connection meditation. Mm. To do it consciously mm. was the first step in that direction. Mm. Yeah, that's when I first started feeling something else is going on here. Really? Yeah. During a meditation? Yes. Or, okay. What, what happened? Um, I had my first UFO sighting at 23, so that changed a lot for me. Mm. But um, every time I would meditate, so the most important thing I took from that experience was meditate. Mm. Go in, go inward. Yeah. And as I started doing that, I also went to Asia to practice in a monastery. Um, also walking meditation. There's many types. It's not just sitting still always for people who are like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a way for everybody to yeah. do a meditation that fits them in a way that can be custom tailored. But um, for me, it gave me goosebumps. And it sounds like such a simple, like, you know, yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah. there was a draft. Yeah. <laughs> but it was different than that. It was really like somebody uh, flows it, their hand over your spine uh, and you're left with this like top yeah. to, to the bottom. Yeah. Um, and I had that every time. Every time I sat down for it, I took my first breath. It was like, whoosh. and I'm like, wow, it's like somebody's pushing me. Or t- letting me know we've got your back, or this is good, because mm. it felt sweet, it felt loving, mm. and that lasted for years. I had no idea there was like actual communication already happening, but it was. Wow, it starts small. Mm. Why do you think uh, ETs are are interested in us? Why? Why? What I read from a lot of information that I got is that a lot of the focus of the universe is on Earth right now. Mm-hmm. They are trying to help us. Why are they doing that? Is there a reason, a particular reason for that? Why we Earthlings are so important to them or um, to the universe? Fascinating, as instead of important, maybe. Yeah, fascinating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there are so many philosophies about this. What I understand is, as a basic fundamental principle, um, and that's my opinion, is that. Um, once you come to that higher frequency realization that everything you you meet everything you encounter is a part of you then if you see something that is needing something (laughs) (laughs) um, and you are synchronistically there so you could give it that if you do that you you amp up there but also your process Mm. So, for instance, yeah. you're walking around, you have um, two ice creams and you see a kid coming to you and they're like, oh, wow, an ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't, e- you can't yeah. even eat both at the same yeah. time. So you just give one to them. Yeah. Yeah. And their joy, uh-huh. you feel it in your heart. Yeah. So the giving so nice multiplies example. the joy. Yeah. So very, very simple. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what it eventually comes down to, I understand. But nothing is depending on it. And that is, as soon mm. as something is depending on it in anybody's story, mm. I would say um, become alert. See what is being communicated here. Mm. Because there might be tension around it, and then we start feeling responsible or thinking mm. that others are responsible for us, mm. and that is giving away your power again. So are you saying we should be selective in, in who or what we channel? Um, I'm saying that whatever information comes to you, whether it's channeled Mm. or not, Mm. like whoever, the newspaper you read, television you watch, all information is just information to me. And half of it in a a way is channeled, but it is channeled always through a filter, like the way you explained it earlier. Mm. Um, But it's about what it does with you in this here and now. Yeah. You're a new person every single moment. Reson- something may resonate with you one day and not the next. Be yeah. okay with that. You're evolving. Yeah. And that will continue to happen. Mm. And there's never, never one set truth in that sense because your perspective will continue to change. Mm. But as soon as there is separation, 
or dependency or neediness or pressure or guilt or fear, all these things. Mm. Or when people start going like, yeah, 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 you can go sit and meditate, but be aware that this and that doesn't begin to communicate with you. Yeah. Or you're, you're, so when you're you coming from fear then instead of... Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Setting out warnings is spreading more fear. Yeah. yeah. And of course, every reality you sketch on so some level has a validity. Yeah. And yes, you can tune in with that. But why, why even go there with your attention? You know, it's why, unless yeah. it is relevant for you. Yeah. But then teach people that whatever you communicate with in that moment apparently has relevance for you and yeah. how you can use that. Mm. Because everything can work to your benefit and be self-empowering if mm. you know who you are. And then you know that to be true. Yeah. And that is the most important message, I think, that the extraterrestrial beings that I communicate with have to share with mm. us to help us remember who we really are because mm. they don't want us to put them on a pedestal at no. all like oh wow it is not at all mm. they want us to put ourselves in an equal place towards them so that we can meet as friends mm -hmm. and yeah that's the most important thing that there there is no uh, hierarchy yeah uh, yeah because yeah. everything is valid exactly yeah. as it is whatever it looks like yeah. yeah and if you know that then you don't have to be afraid anymore of basically anything no because it's okay whatever it is it's okay it can mm. be there mm. um and that's actually what arjun keeps um repeating he says um a bit of a bit of a harsh but a pun way to say it yeah. he says hating it is dating it so the uh, more angry uh, you are with something the more you attach yeah. yourself to yeah. it uh, yeah. so you want to be okay with it first or neutralize i'm not saying mm. you have to promote wars or suffering at all no. but if you're neutral towards it that's actually where you can begin to become of assistance because if you come from a neediness, you have this unfair relationship. Part of the problem. Right. In a sense, yeah. Like coaches that are addicted to their clients. Yeah. yeah. That, that kind of thing. It's both yeah. ways. You're yeah. co-creating that tendency. Yeah. So it's always good to be aware of that. Why are you doing that? This, mm. Why are you doing what you do? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's just pure blind passion, just for the fun of it, like you're writing your book, you have no idea where it's going to go. Yeah. I'm super excited yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the energy frequency to come from. Yeah. And then surprises happen and magic unfolds. True. True. Like with your first book, right? It just yeah. took off. Yeah, a lot of, uh, exactly, it took off. And uh, if I read my books now, which I, I seldom do, but if I ever, you know, open a book and think, it's it's always a surprise to me. It's like, wow, this is good stuff. Uh, who wrote this? You know, it's just like uh -huh. that feeling. Yeah. And I think it's because um, looking back, I, I mean, I, I was the instrument to write it, obviously. Um, but it, uh, many of the books I wrote, I think, wrote themselves mm -hmm. for a large part. Yeah. Of course, I, uh, for instance, in this last book, The Game of Life, uh, I did a lot of research. But even the research that I did was so incredibly focused. You know, I mean, you can you can research this topic like for lives, of course, you know, yeah. and it could could have been a very very long search. But somehow in the search, I felt that you know things were very worked very smoothly. I I found the right books, the right people would appear. Uh, whenever I had a question, somehow I would land upon a site or some person or even reading a newspaper, whatever, information would just come to me. So it was very easy in a sense. And that's usually for me also the mark, so that the benchmark, like, okay, I'm on the right track. Right. You know, when things go easy. I mean, I, I don't mind working for things, you know, sometimes you do have to, you know, work. Yeah, true. But um, there's a difference between work and work. If you mm. struggle, and if you sort of like, oh, you know, sort of trying to push this stone up the hill. And it was not like that at all. It right. just went very fluently. And yeah. it was with most of my books. Yeah. And I think that's why also people recognize them. And that's why they were received so well, I think, because it, there's something about them that you sort of feel like you're tapping into this natural flow of life, which right. is our birthright, which every one of us can tap into, you know, and it makes life light and easy and happy and flowy and, you know, uh, and 
I think that's because that energy is in my books. I think that's what that's maybe the main reason why people like it on an energetic level. Yes, yeah. Um, just apart from the information, which might also be very helpful, but it's just a way of being. I think. And this is the cool thing. I love that you just brought that up. That the the way you describe that happy, flowy energy, and mm. when you, you take action, but it doesn't feel like work in yeah. the old sense of the word. Yeah, it's inspired action, so it just flows. Yeah. We, I think we all know that yeah. somehow, yeah. right? It's in our, in our being. So when we see mm. another person laugh so hard and uncontrollably, you just can't stop, but you know, yeah. start laughing yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because we already know. Yeah. This is what we're doing. We're, we're remembering together. Yeah. And channeling is just one way of yeah. the many, many, many ways that we have or yeah. already created for ourselves as availability, available there for yeah. us yeah. here. To, uh, to remember who we really are. Yeah. We are that, that childlike joy. That's our nature. Yeah. That's our true nature, I believe. Yes. Yeah. It's interesting that the, the, the yogis, many of the yogis that I was studying with in India, when they uh, talk about meditation, they often use the word remembrance. Okay. Synony synonymously, you know, yeah. they, sometimes they would say, let's sit down in meditation or for meditation. And sometimes they would say, let's sit down for remembrance. Oh, I love that. Yeah, because that's what it is, isn't it? It's just remembering, you know, yeah. it's already there. Exactly. That's why we have aha moments. Yeah. You would never have the aha no. moment if the no. information wasn't somewhere already slumbering in Interesting. you. Interesting. You know, right? my, my last book was called uh, Homesick for Paradise. Okay. And because I, I would ask people, just everywhere I went, I would say, do you ever feel homesick, you know, for, for you know... And they would, they, and practically everybody has that. that right. Sometimes there's this feeling of, why is the world like this? I mean, you sort of feel that there were times when it was better, where we were just, you know, things were, I don't know, there were people were just respected and loved as a state of normal life, you know? I mean, so that feeling of homesickness. And then I, I thought, you can only feel homesick or be attracted to something that you know. Right. You, I mean, you cannot, you can never you know, uh, want a cappuccino if you've never Paradise. drank it, you know? <laughs> so the fact that we're all longing for paradise or longing for love or longing for connection or whatever we're longing for means we know it. We've right. had it, but we've right. lost it. Right. So remember. Yes. Yeah. And this is the interstellar connection for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming yeah. home to more. It, funnily enough, made me feel more human. More, Interesting. More completely human. Funnily enough, and that's, I think you said that some days ago, that it's you, it's more down to earth. And I had to laugh at that because it's like you're talking about all these galactic adventures and it made you come down to earth. Right. But it did, huh? Totally. Hmm. It was much more awkward to have lived my life from my point of view without knowing that that was there. Um, and now I understand um, the complete picture. Half of um, me hadn't landed on Earth because I didn't know you could bring that here. Right. So, but if you understand that that is a part of you intrinsically, it's just inherently you mm. too as well. And I am the persona me that I'm playing to be in this role. Both. That makes me complete knowing that it is both simultaneously coexisting. Mm. But if I have to cut off one half or the other, I feel limp like half yeah. amputated yeah. and if you desire as, as happens in the old new paradigm <laughs> yeah. where are um, we yeah. where people are like meditating and oh, i don't want to be here i just want to be there and yeah. then you're running away from your persona which is also not the point yeah it's really about balancing it out yeah and there's nothing more exciting and awesome as a journey to, than to continuously rediscover that balance in yourself. Because mm -hmm. every day it's going to look different mm -hmm. and you're never going to get there. Mm -hmm. I love that. Don't you love yeah. that? Yeah. You're never going to yeah. be done. I used to not like that. <laughs> I love that. It's so cool. <laughs> I used to think, okay, when am I there? You know, and now I yeah. realize, you know. No final station. It's not, it's not about <laughs> getting somewhere. Right. You know, it's about being here or this, wherever this is it you know this yeah. is it yeah but i, I agree the, the full picture and not the amputated part right. you know just so everything can be there yeah and, and for me especially my interstellar parts of course they can be there too but also every person i meet 
every every challenging circumstance I create for myself or co-create with other people, mm. it can be there because I already right. allowed it in. So it must be yeah. there for a good reason. Yeah. This is what it's about. Play with the game. Yeah. But why do you think it's it's such a taboo for a lot of people still, this whole interstellar thing? I mean, why do people respond to that so heavily, negatively sometimes? Well, yeah, I keep thinking culture is the number one. Culture, Religion, yeah. the way things have been painted, translated yeah. to us by older generations. Uh, yeah. That can't be, you're just dreaming, you're right. making it up. And do you see that changing now? Do you? <clears throat> Very rapidly. Yeah? Yes. Uh. But maybe also because of the position I'm taking in right now, because people open up to me. Yeah. So I get these stories from people who work in film, who are in politics, who are in banks, in ho uh, hospitals, where they work in all layers of society. Mm. I get authors, I have people with PhDs, I have psychologists, people with their own practice, and they come as a client, they come for a reflection. Mm -hmm. I personally don't call it a healing because you're already whole, but you mm. come for a reflection to have a more visible experience of your inherent wholeness. Yeah. And so they, I'm just mirroring, I'm just the tool, and they use our Junes or, or the Yael's information whatever way they want. Um, but it's from all layers of society and I am so grateful to see that this shift is happening. Mm. You can of course still call it underground, but it's happening. And the younger people, oh my God. Yeah, mm, <laughs> I'm yeah. blown away. Yeah. yeah, the younger the younger ones go so fast. Yeah, it's interesting it's because so I, natural. I teach a lot of uh, meditation in, in, in yoga uh, schools in, in the Netherlands. And uh, I often have the feeling, because there's young people, of course, that I teach mostly, and I often have the feeling that they're sort of looking looking at me and sort of trying not to yawn, you know, in a sense <laughs> that, yeah, we know this already, you know, and I'm, I'm really glad you're telling us this, you know, but it, I, I mean, that's not probably you know, not always the case, but I do feel that that generation, um, you know, all the things that I really had to discover for myself, you know, travel to India 17 times and study and practice and meditate, is for them like something that is, you know, maybe even genetically in their DNA, you know, it's it like, is. it's like, it is. that's why they, they sometimes look at me like I'm saying, I'm stating the obvious all the time. Don't you <laughs> love that? Yeah, it's great. I love it's that. It's great. Yeah. Yay, let yeah. this be the obvious. Yeah. That's, that's what we were like shooting for the moon and happy when we hit a star. Well, if yeah. this becomes yeah. the obvious, then, um, you know, yeah. the heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. I'm, that's very much the energy I like to bring this down to earth with, like mm -hmm. to other people also. Yes, extraterrestrials, of course. You know. Yeah. Being the only one in the universe, that's the weird thought. Yeah, that's, that's the weird thought. Think about it yeah, <laughs> rationally. Yeah. Use the mind. You know. Yeah. It's really, 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 really odd yeah. if we were the only ones, but you know. It's it's gonna unfold one way or another. Yeah. And this can happen in many, many ways. Mm. And it's so really exciting to be here right now and see what way we will co-create together. I agree. Yeah. Mm. I'm so happy you're here on this path as well. Thank you. And, and thanks for the help, uh, by the way. Thanks for, you know, standing by me and uh, believing in this project. And yeah. you were one of the persons that I... I sent my book to, and it's something I usually don't do with all the other books that I've written. I, I only, uh, well, I sent it to the publisher, obviously, when it was finished, you know, but I never, ever uh, read it to anyone or sent it to anyone okay. because I sort of felt like, you know, um, I want this to be my, um, not my baby, but something that I don't want it to be touched, you know, and, and there are, you, you know this as an artist as well, I guess, that there are phases in your process of creating something that if you would show it to other people and they would come with their you know whatever it would sort of damage the process because vulnerable. you're not there yeah you're not there that. yet you know that was most of my life with yeah. talking about this et thing exactly i felt vulnerable because i wasn't sure yet you wasn't you weren't there yeah, yet right and i had that with with my other books that i wanted to be there you know right. that when, okay this is what, perfect for me anyway so then it went to the to the publisher but in this case i sort of felt like this is so new to me you know that i sort of want some 
second opinions, you know, mm. people, you were one of them mm -hmm. and you've been very supportive and uh, so thank you for that. It's beautiful. Yeah, Everybody yeah. Who, who walks into this direction, what you're doing right now, mm. it's brave. Mm. Um, yeah, I admire it because... Mm. Well, you know what they go through. You, you've been there. Yes, <laughs> that's probably the yeah. main reason. Yeah. Uh, but the time is ready, and um, yeah, like you, um, yeah, like you already explained to me earlier. Also, you feel too that there's there's no way back. You're ready. You already took the turn, Once. and now just you know, yeah. let's see what. It's just time for it. Yeah. And isn't it beautiful that we can both see nothing is depending on it? It, it can yeah. be whatever it is. Yeah. So yeah, true. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm super uh, grateful with um, what you're doing in the world. Oh, well, thank you. And with the meditation as well, of course. Yeah, that really helps. It's opening up the doors for many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It became a really big movement in Holland, and it's mm -hmm. it's. Um, but again, that's that. It just happened in a sense. I mean, I did I did initial work. I wrote a book. I like, created the website. But that was about it, you know, yeah. and and that for me again is I think a mark of, of something that is supposed to happen or it's right. just happening, you know. That's generally just I, I once I once there was a <laughs> yogi I met and he said when I asked him, you know, what is the essence of uh, of spiritual development or whatever, and he just said, get out of the way. That's it. That was it. That's you know? really for me, it. Really, oh yeah. Yes, yeah. that's what it is. Get out of the way. That's for me too. I just had yeah. to open up my mouth, right, and just speak. Yeah. Let it through. Yeah. Don't think about. Don't it. Don't interfere. Don't, don't interfere. Don't, uh, just let it through. Again, that is also one of the most difficult things to do. I think. Yes. And it brings up if you have like any ego issues, it will come to the forefront. And I think as a channeler, um, your own process is continuously tested and. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really important to, to stay clear with yourself. Mm. You can't fall asleep. You with, you with the book as well. Mm -hmm. You have to stay awake. Yeah. And, and, and universe is going to ask yeah. you to... Well, you said you wanted to do this, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> and that's what I'm noticing too. I'm, I'm turning this road. Now I'm walking it. Now I'm really walking it. And it's yeah. not like, oh, you know, let yeah. just, let's go back to when I was 16 or something. Right. No, no, no. But I like it. Yeah, like or, it. or what, we, what you also probably have is that you sort of feel that you arrive at a plateau, you, you know it now, you, 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 mm. something like that, you know? Yeah, that can happen, very... eh? And, and, but, <laughs> but, but then, of course, you, you get stuck again, you yeah. know? Because I had that with writing this book that after a while of doing so much research, there was a stage where I thought, now I get it, you know? Now I understand. But then I realized, you know, you, you're never going to understand. It's much too big, you know? I mean, I don't even understand the history of the world, let alone the history of the galaxy. You know, yeah, it's just, right. it's vast. It's, it's everything. Yeah. So we'll never be able to pinpoint it. But, you know, we can be, I think, um, available to that energy. We, we yeah. could never have it. You know, you can't own right. the sun, exactly. but you can be available. And, and for me, I think that, that's about the highest goal in my life, I think, to just be available to... Whatever wants to flow through yeah. in that moment. Yeah. That's my goal. That's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Same thing. Whatever wants to flow in that moment. Because I don't know what this will look like in a few years. Yeah. Or I have no idea where I'm going. And that is I a constant live. challenge because it, it yeah. forces you to let go of all your preconceptions. Yes. And all the things that you think are yeah. true. All the, all the stuff what, you're holding on to. What helps me do that is fall in love with the unknown. Mm. Just decide that whatever I don't know yet is going to be more fun than where I am right now. Yeah. I just decided that. And that's why I can do this, I think. Because mm. I don't know, but it's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's just going to be good. Yeah. may have nothing to do with what I'm doing right now, but mm. it's going to be so good. Because mm. that's evolution. Mm. And all I have to do is be open for it. Mm. Right? Beautiful. <laughs> Amen Beautiful. to that.